Hello guys, welcome to Tech and Tech. We're going to, in today's video, talk about the Battle of Totenberg Forest. Now, we've talked about this in a, like a video way back, but we're going to talk about this again, and this time we're going to go into way more detail than we went last time. Now, in the last video, I just talked about some of the most basic stuff about how the battle was formed, why the battle was formed, why a son turned on his father, and things that were like pretty basic about the battle. But in this video, we're going to go into detail and, in fact, things that were going on before and well, some little time after the battle. Like, yeah, basically, it's way more detailed than the last video that I had on the Battle of Totenberg. Now, the Battle of Totenberg, as we all know, is a very famous battle. It's actually known as one of the most decisive military battles ever in human history because it stopped the Roman Empire from stretching her empire because, like, if uh, they would have continued on stretching and stretching their empire, we might have been speaking Latin because, well, they, they were, had very strong armies. They probably had the potential to expand to way far away lands. But, well, they found out that this, well, this uh, thinking about the expansion of the territory of the empire was, well, out of hand because, well, the Germans have defeated them, the Huns have defeated them, the Persians have defeated them. And, well, yeah, the Romans were pretty scared. They, they didn't want to uh, expand their territories any further. And then until this battle happened and, well, the other tribes that were also barbaric in the Roman territory started revolting against the Romans. And, well, basically, these small revolts started forming rebellions and, well, Rome was crushed. Well, Western Rome, Eastern Rome was still fine forming the Byzantine Empire that was very powerful. But like the Western Roman Empire just got crushed under its own weight of power. And now, well, let's just start talking about this battle. Now, this battle happened on when Rome was under the reign of uh, Caesar Augustus. And well, they decided that Germania was not like many other lands that where they have conquered. It was not like Britannia. It was not like Gaul. And well, they thought that civilization could be brought to these lands so that maybe the Germans wanted to, well, join the Roman Empire and without like there being any bloodshed. So they thought to themselves that, yeah, we can probably bring civilization to these people. We can teach them our uh, well, mathematics, astronaut, uh, astronaut, uh, astronomy and well basically all of our knowledge we may be able to give them some of our tools that they start working out with their tools so yeah basically bringing them up to speed of rome and then they will might join the roman empire because like just the way austria decided to join the german reich in well, world war ii but before world war ii well they decide that it, it might happen like this well, in truth, they thought to themselves, well, what will be the best way to bring civilization to an, well, ruleless land? Well, they thought to themselves, yeah, the best way to bring civilization to them would be to start taking tribute. And, well, in the name of taxes, it would be to uh, take a lot of tribute from them to the point they cannot pay it. So this will actually stop the wars that would happen between the tribes. Because, well, if the tribes get short on food, they will start decreasing their focus on their military and start focusing on, well, agriculture and economy and trying to produce more food so that with the Roman taxes, they can actually, well, and provide themselves with the actual food they need besides paying the Romans. Well, the Romans thought to themselves and they chose Varus as the senator that was going to bring law to this lawless land. And the Varus went on and he started taking tributes from these, well, uh, the small tribes that lived uh, that lived through Germania, and well, that, this actually backfired greatly. This happened like the thing it did was that it did exactly the opposite of what the Romans were expecting. Instead of uh, the German tribes uh, decreasing their focus on their military, increasing their focus on agriculture and economy, they actually did quite the opposite. They increased their uh, well their focus on their military and decreased it in the form of agriculture because they believed that we cannot produce the amount of food needed for ourselves and the Romans and they'll we need to either fight the Romans or fight other tribes in order to take their food and this caused the German armies to grow stronger and stronger instead of growing weaker and weaker until they no longer have an army the Romans have to deal with so yeah this is the first part of the plan that backfired and then the Germanic tribes decided that the tributes were too heavy they asked Boris to lower it but he did not and well he kept on 
taking tribute from these until well these guys had enough and they decided that on their way back from their summer well uh, from their summer marching i don't know what they call it their summer campaign they were going to return and well these guys decided to ambush them in that forest under the command of Arminius, well, he has many German names. One of them, I think, is called Hermann because, well, it's a German name. And uh, people, many people believe that is, this is his actual German name, Hermann. And, well, under his command, he, they decided to ambush the Romans and massacre them in the Battle of Totenberg, which, well, we all know happened and went on well for them. Well, this battle well, was formed because, well, the son Armenius decided that Germania was the land that he was born in, it was the land he should fight for instead of Rome. And, well, this led to Armenius uh, having, uh, well, due to the fact that Varus trusted him a lot, he saw him as his own son. In fact, Armenius was born in Germania. He was the son of Sigemir, the Reek, or, well, the owner of the clan of uh, the Churuskas, and, well, he was his son, he was taken as a tribute by the Romans so that like the Germans don't uh, decide to declare war on Rome because then their sons would be killed. So they did this and they took the, his sons as tribute and well, uh, his sons were born, raised, not born, they were raised in Rome and they, like, they were told to forget what their people were, what their land was and what religion they believe they decided to forget everything about Germania and they were going to be made only Roman and though this didn't happen uh, Arminius still remembered that this is the land he was born in and this is the land he must fight for and so he managed to get some of the tribes together forming some 20,000 soldiers put them inside the battle put them inside the forest of Totenberg known as Kalkheiser right now I think uh, well, their, their tactic was mainly defeat in detail by like um, cutting down these trees and this would uh, form small gaps, like not small gaps, form small groups of Roman soldiers in each area which they could just storm with superior numbers, take them out, then they could back off and they could go over towards other groups. Uh, this tactic was also used by the Gallics by crushed like uh, crushing down trees on the Romans, but the Germans actually needed the weapons and the equipment the Romans had, so they didn't actually crush the Romans using these trees. They actually just separated them from group to group. This Also, these small groups would decrease the effectiveness of the Testudo formation, which was a formation that the Roman soldiers just held up their shields in order to avoid arrows and spears. Well, this would, uh, like, the fact this has to be a large army, like I think, 30 to 50 men are needed to form an effective uh, testudo formation. Testudo is actually the name, of, I think, the name of some kind of turtle, which will make sense because I think, yeah, these guys will look just like turtles when doing this. And uh, this would decrease the uh, effectiveness of the testudo formation, allowing the Germans to hammer the Romans using arrows and spears before actually charging in and killing them because both well, the Romans had superior gear and hand-to-hand -hand combat with them would be either suicide or, would, well, it would be pretty tough. But the Germans had lots of wars between their own tribes, as we said, and, well, these wars between them helped them gain a lot of experience, and they would, like, they would know how to deflect a sword blow and then deliver a sword blow right afterwards. The Romans also had such experience, but it was not as much because they haven't spent their entire life fighting. The Germans did. They spent their entire lives either farming or fighting. Well, these guys also, the Germans had very healthier diets made of usually, well, dairy or fruits. And, well, the Romans had all kinds of food. Well, the, they usually eat meat and dairy because, well, uh, milk and other things, other products were something that could be found commonly throughout the land of the Germans. This allowed them to form really strong bodies and really strong bones, allowing them to actually um, overcome the Romans when it came to brute force. This uh, defeat in detail tactic and their brute force and, well, the fact that the Romans couldn't form Testudo well and they could just hammer them using their spears and their arrows before charging in allowed them to crush the Romans small in small groups and small groups, small groups, and then more small groups. And then they would just go in, kill them all, and they would take all their weapons, their armor, their superior gear in order to make themselves not only, well, physically and not strategically, but also, well, uh, 
equipmentry superior to the Romans. This actually helped them a lot in winning the battle. And well, they won the battle and Arminius was known as a hero between the Germanic tribes, later on being assassinated by Marbot, which thought he had too much power and well, he just assassinated him because he feared him. And yeah, that was the end of uh, Arminius or Hermann, as the Germans know him, I think. There used to be lots of his names, but Hermann was one of the most accurate. Anyway, it's been pretty long. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the war bell to be notified of the rest of the wars that will occur on the channel later. Thank you guys for watching again, and stand by for my next video.